All right, friends, I am back for episode number 27. As we talked about with Cynthia last episode, we are going to head to Canalave City. You ready, Tori? Tori was startled and look your way. Oh, he must have been spacing out there, or she must have been spacing out. All right, we are going to check our town map. So as you guys can see, we've kind of explored the whole central area of Sinnoh by now. And now it's time to start picking off all these little peripheral cities that we haven't been to yet. And we'll kind of go clockwise, starting with Canalave. So to fly there, we will fly to Jubilee first. And now that we have Surf, we can head west. One thing I've always really enjoyed about the Pokemon games is kind of the way they gate things. Like, it seems very natural. Like, oh yeah, you need to have this gym badge to uh, use Surf. So that makes sense. Sometimes it's a little bit more forced, like the clowns here, or Fantina not being there to battle you until after you've done the uh, Celestic Town plot, but, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. So you guys might remember we were here a long time ago. This is actually where we caught our Magikarp that became our Gyarados. I'm not sure which way to go. And I don't think we're gonna really find too many interesting Pokemon in the water, so I'll probably use a Repel. Thank you for the ride, Wild Bibberl. Oh, we have to get back in the water again. Oh, well. Hey, Jar of Honey. That's not too great. I do see some berries there, though. Outdoor fishing for the win. Shouting doesn't help my fishing any, but shout I must. Oh, is that so? Um, I did decide I'm going to, I think, wait on Shadow Claw, even though technically it is better for Infernape than U-Turn because it has better coverage. Um, there are actually some Pokemon that resist all four of my attacks, like Charizard, for example, but would not resist Shadow Claw. Um... Although they'd still take more damage from close combat just because of the higher base power. And it also makes me super effective against more Pokemon than U-Turn would. Uh, let's use Rock Tomb, it's super effective. Yeah, I should have used this against Mr. Miss uh, Magius in the gym battle because it would have slowed Miss Magius down and then I could have gone next with Bite right away. And it would have slowed her for my future Pokemon too, but all's well that ends well. Um, What was I just talking about? That quickly I forgot. Uh, so, oh, Shadow Claw, yeah, and U-Turn. Um, but U-Turn is just so much fun that, I don't know, I, I feel like I want to have some more fun with it for a while, so. And that's the point of the games, to have fun, right? Now, obviously, for the end, I will make my teams as powerful as I can, because I want to make sure we're in tip-top fighting shape against uh, some of the end-game trainers. And I've heard some of them can be very difficult, which I'm very much looking forward to. But for now, you know. I don't think it really matters too much if we have U-Turn over Shadow Claw. Alright, so even Rock Tomb doesn't do that much after those Intimidates, but I really don't have better moves. And it looks like... I can see what Ice Beam does. Maybe I'll get the Freeze Chance. And it won't miss on, like, Rock Tomb, so... There's no reason to decrease its speed any further, I don't think. So I think, yeah, because of the accuracy and the attack drops... And the freeze chance. Oh! And looks like Tori dodged out of the way. I'm surprised it didn't use Crunch instead of Ice Fang the first time. That probably would have been uh, my choice of moves. Alright, down goes Gyarados. Number two. Well done, Tori. Got some more XP for your friends there. And that's it for Fisher Miguel. Ah, this is hurting. Add some money to the bank. Alright, let's face this other fisherman. I wonder if he's like, is he guarding the berries? Is he guarding a hidden item? Tentacool. Um, Tentacool, I would not suggest as part of your team. Tentacool is okay. I mean, if you really like Tentacruel, then go for it. It's not bad by any stretch of the imagination. It's just not like, super good. And it's not a Pokemon I'd be like, really excited about. Maybe because they're just like everywhere in Gen 1 and most generations. Because they're so common, they're not that exciting. Although Tentacruel actually um, has been useful in competitive battling at times. It is a, a fairly good defensive water type. Although there are a lot of those. Um, also being poison, it's actually it made a bit of a resurgence thanks to the addition of fairy types. I'm going to use some... Um, uh, let's use a Super Repel. Because there might be a lot of water, or maybe some grass too, between here and Cantilave. I don't remember this route too well. Yeah, yeah, nothing's biting. Well, how about you take a break for a Pokemon battle then? Oh, that'd be, oh don't have like lots of Magikarp, please. Uh, how cool would it be, like... I haven't been fishing since I was like a kid. 
I used to like when I was a kid because I would go with like my cousins, my grandma and grandpa. That was always fun. But um, all right, well, let's use bite. Hopefully, enough to finish off magic card. But how cool would it be to go fishing and like to bring your Pokemon with you? It just I feel like Pokemon make everything better. Ah, oh, not quite enough. That's even more annoying. Oh, and it used Flail, which does more damage the lower its health is. Fortunately for us, Magikarp's um, Magikarp's attack stat is still like very, very bad. So, all right. Well, if he has a second Magikarp, I'll probably just switch characters. I don't think he's gonna have six Magikarp. Oh, now you get the crit. Thanks, Tori. <laughs> just kidding. But um, yeah, I, I don't think. Uh, Okay, yeah, I suppose I don't think he's gonna have five magic because that'd be really bad. But if he did, I'd probably switch to like Electabuzz to burn through him. Alright, so we do have our attack lowered. But I'm still gonna go with Rock Tomb. Because it is super effective, and I wasn't sure if Gyarados is faster. I didn't think so. Gyarados is not super fast, whereas Float Soul actually is pretty fast. But you never know. Ice Fang, going for the freeze, I guess? And thankfully, didn't get it. Got a crit, but not a freeze. Right, I'm going to try Ice Beam for my own bucket of freeze, since clearly we'll need at least two more attacks regardless. Oh, and it's, I think one more Ice Beam would be enough to finish it off, but I am not 100% sure about that. Oh, another crit. Um, so even though there's a small chance of missing with Rock Tomb, I'm less than 95% certain another Ice Beam would finish it off, so... I think Rock Tomb is the way to go in that scenario. Alright, so there's a crit. Don't think we needed it, but appreciate it nonetheless. And let's see who else we have to face. Ah, uh, Magikarp. He tricked me with his fun Gyarados Pokemon. Hopefully he has like a Barboach or something different. Um, I mean, it really doesn't matter what we use. Apparently none of our attacks will knock it out, but... Let's try Surf. It's not very effective, but it does get stabbed. Oh, there we go. Cool. Magikarp must have a slightly better defense than defense, I guess. I don't really remember too much about Magikarp's stats, except that its speed is decent, and its other stats are really bad. And another one, but hopefully Surf will knock this one out as well. I wonder if he has four Magikarp and a Gyarados. If so, that's going to be kind of sad. At least give him two Gyarados. Also, the trainer right next to him had two Gyarados, too, so I feel like this is, like, really repetitive, having the exact same evolutionary family. Yep, another Magikarp. See, I don't get that. Like, what's the point of giving this guy five Pokémon and, like, a lot of the other, like, Ace Trainers, like, two or one? Like, if you only have Magikarp and Gyarados to give this guy, give him, like, one Magikarp and one Gyarados. Like, really, we've seen Magikarp. We don't get much XP from it. It's not interesting. We don't need to fight more. Like, who thought that was a good idea? Overall, the Pokemon games are very well designed, but that part, all these Magikarp, not so much. Alright, oh, this looks like we took a kind of a shortcut here. Um, yeah, I don't know what the point would have been of going up north there, but uh, let's face the sailor. A man of the sea is also a man of Pokemon. Yep, once again, just how cool would it be to go on a cruise ship and everybody has Pokemon there, and... Or just on a, like a fishing vessel, you could watch like, uh, what was that show? Uh, Deadliest Catch. And they'd all have like, you know, Pokemon helping them out doing the catching. I guess they'd be catching Krabbies, which is a little sad, but... Anyway, Mantike. Haven't seen a Mantike yet. The unevolved form of Mantine. Um, which I think is... Ooh, I don't know. Is it just water type or is it water and flying? Uh, Mantine is water and flying, but I'm not sure about Mantike. Um, and apparently the game refuses to tell me. So let's use a Rock Tomb which would be a decent choice either way, and it'll tell us if it's super effective or not. It is, okay, so Mantike is also part flying type. I was leaning that way, but I was not sure at all. And another Gyarados! I love Gyarados, and they are cool to face, but like, we just faced three of them. Why give everybody on this route a Gyarados? There are other Pokemon. Start with the Rock Tomb to slow it down. And then I'll go for an Ice Beam. We haven't got the Freeze chance yet, but maybe this will be our lucky shot. Alright, so our attack is lowered, our defense is lowered. Thankfully, they all reset at the end of the battle. Actually, we probably should use... I don't know if we should use Bite. 
Blade might not do enough, though. I don't think it would. Hey, we got the freeze. Good job, Tori. And that saved us from probably a lot of damage if it used, like, Crunch or something. Maybe even in Naki Eye after that, uh, that Leer. That would have been close. Alright. Let's hope that guitarist down there does not have a Gyarados. I don't think he will. Anchors away. Alright, let's switch out Tori for, uh, a different Pokemon. Let's do... let's bring Ace back out again. A lot of times guitarists have, like, electric types, so Tori might not be best against them. Tori's still the one out of the Pokeball following us, but we'll use Ace for battle at least. And one Pokemon. Magneton. I don't know. Or Magnemite. They're in the underground, but I don't think they exist. No, in fact, I'm almost positive they do not exist. In, um... In this, uh, Sinnoh Dex. I think Pikachu's line and Pachirisu and the Shinx line are the only electric types in the Sinnoh Dex. And we do know a ground type move, so that is very fortuitous. Let's see if this will be a knockout after the Intimidate. I could be wrong, but I want to say in the olden days, Roar used to work even when you're underground, but I could be wrong on that. And because of that Intimidate, it survived a dig only long enough to use Leer, so didn't really matter too much. We'll use a Bullet Seed to finish off Lixio. Alright, not too hard. And guitarist Tony is defeated. Can you hear it? That's my guitar weeping. It's a George Harrison reference while my guitar gently weeps. Great Beatles song, but... That's kind of a redundant thing to say, I suppose. Alright, I'll come back for the berries there. Are there anything... Is there anything worth finding over here? Not really. Alright, how about this picnicker? Tori is taking it easy. Alright, Tori. You take it easy. Oh, that must have been his girlfriend over there that we talked to a long time ago. Well, thank you for the stickers. One of you two should learn to, like, swim or rent a boat or something. Or find a Pokemon that knows surf. Oh, it's, uh, Lucas's dad, right? Sin, long time no see. Oh, you look puzzled. You're wondering who I am. No, once again, I remember you. I'm Professor Rowan's assistant and Lucas's father. The professor asked that I upgrade your Pokedex, you see. So I've chosen this spot on a hunch that you pass through. Very smart. Sin, may I have your Pokedex for a moment? Let's see, was I supposed to put in the software here? Hmm. Looks like your Pokedex doesn't need upgrading. It already lets you toggle between images of male and female Pokemon. Technology sure has improved lately. Okay, I'll leave you to carry on with your project for the Professor. Maybe I also ask you to keep an eye on Team Galactic? The Professor is concerned about what happened in Jubilee City. It's probably nothing to worry over. I'll be on my way now. That's right, they were accosting him a while back. It's a shame we couldn't upgrade our Pokedex to like the National Dex, because that would have been nice, but a little too soon for that. Alright, let's heal up the Pokemon Center just because you never know what you're going to face. And I don't think there's like a rival battle or anything, although it has been a little while, so you never know. I wouldn't be totally shocked. Alright, in fact, I wonder if... Yes, I was about to say there's a little piece of my memory that was like, I kind of remember running into Barry on this bridge here. Again, the stupid things that are in my mind from more than a decade ago. Whoops! Oh, hey, Sin! You're going to challenge the gym leader up ahead, eh? Someone should check to see if you're ready for this challenge. And that someone is me, with my brand new gym badge. Alright, Barry. Bring it on. So it's kind of cool that we're using our main team now. That was not, you know, intentional. That was just a... I felt like using them some more, so... I, it didn't even cross my mind there would be a, a rival battle coming up. But it's good, because we got to use... Um, our other team against the last battle against Barry, so we'll mix things up a bit. Oh, okay, this is not a good matchup. Ace is admiring the view, but uh, let's focus on the battle, buddy, because you are intimidated, and rightly so, because this is not a good type matchup. Um, we have nothing super effective, but we are faster, so maybe we'll get some flinch luck with Bite there. Yes, okay, that's what I was hoping for. All right, we got one lucky flinch. Can we get another? Oh, it has a Quick Claw. Oh, that's cool. I like they gave him, like, items, too. 
and Endeavor. That will bring my health down actually quite a bit. That was a good move because it has much lower health than me to begin with. Because remember, Endeavor is not based on percentages. It's based on your actual HP number. And we can't see his HP number, but presumably before that bite, it was 52. All right, and three attacks is just enough to finish off Staradia. And a Heracross. Very cool Pokemon, Gen 2. I actually trained a Heracross in my uh, HeartCold Let's Play. That's actually the Pokemon I ended up choosing instead of Espeon when I was planning out that team. I was I was really torn because I like both Heracross and Espeon, but I think I wanted another physical attacker. This is a great time to use Aerial Ace because Heracross is bug and fighting type, and both those types are weak to uh, Aerial Ace. Uh, I'm actually surprised it survived that, but I guess after the Intimidate and not getting stabbed and Aerial Ace being only 60 base power, it was enough. But luckily, another Aerial Ace should finish off Heracross no problem. Now, does he have four Pokemon or five? I want to say he has five, which is pretty cool if he does. So those two are probably the two he has no matter what. And then I imagine, yeah, I think he has the same, like, three from before. Right, Ponyta, Roselia, and I wonder if his Primplup has evolved yet. 34? Oh, it's going to be close. My guess is no, because a lot of the times the new arrivals don't evolve right away. And Ponyta is very smart to bring against Ace. Um, Grass has a lot of weaknesses, as you can tell. It's weak to flying, weak to bug, weak to fire, and Barry has all three. But because of our smart coverage moves here and a little bit of flinch luck... We seem to be uh, doing pretty well, all things considered. Alright, so after this agility, Ponyta will probably be faster. Let's see if it knows, like, Flame Wheel or anything that could possibly do a lot of damage to us. Growl. Yeah, Barry is not playing very smart. That is uh, not the move I would have used there, because he had a chance to, like, knock out our Leafeon and take down one of our Pokemon, which I would have been impressed by, but... No. Didn't do it. All right, and there goes the dig, finishing off Ponyta. Yeah, that'd be one thing too. It's one thing just to be over-leveling your opponents, but the fact that the AI doesn't seem like super good these days, or at least not during most battles, maybe at the end game it's better. And at Battle Tower it does seem really good. So it's it's not that they don't know how to make a good AI, they're just like purposely tuning it down to make it easier. And I feel like by doing both, they've really over-tuned it. Like you can see here, one, their levels, they're okay compared to my Pokemon because I used another team for a few episodes. Um, but otherwise, we'd be like level 40 something by now. Plus, they didn't evolve his Pokemon. Plus, he uses like random moves, it seems. I think there's just there's too much working in our favor. But Primplup, as we know, is not part Steel type. I think we determined that before. Which means Bullet Seed should be super effective. How many will we get? At least three. Yep, three it is. And Charm, okay. What is it with all these trainers and like stat lowering moves? Like, yes, our attack is a lot lower now, which, you know, it, it's not a bad move. I'll give that to him. But still, like, at some point, you can't just be using stat reducing moves. You have to actually do damage. And I'm not sure that was the time to use a stat reducing move, because if I get another hit here, yep. Not very bright, Barry. Not very bright. All right, another level for Tori. Oh, yeah, he's one more Pokemon. Roselia. We've gotten out of tight spots that this... Uh, I didn't read that, but... And Roselia is poison type, which is also super effective. Why did he send Primplup against me instead of Roselia? That's kind of odd. Um, Aerial Ace is super effective, so we will use that. Once again, yay for type coverage. Now, after all those defense drops, maybe he's lowering our attack for a Roselia sweep, although here he goes using more stat moves. Like, just use... I don't know what he has. Sludge, uh, sludge something? I don't know. But <laughs> Sludge Wave, Sludge Bomb, Mana Shock. Or just keep using Growth until I kill you. Yeah, I hate to say it, Barry, but you have a decent team in the making here, but you are really bad at Pokemon. We're not done yet. Neither me nor my Pokemon have given up. If I was your Pokemon, I would give up. Just, just not being mean here, but like... Yeah... I feel like I'd be very disappointed in you as a, as a trainer, as a manager there, as a leader. Like, you're letting them down by not using their best moves. 
It's almost like he's trying to let me win. Maybe, maybe that's what's going on here. What just happened? You're telling me I lost? Plus, he has all these gym badges, so he clearly didn't win these gym badges by just using stat moves all day long. Yeah, yeah, you're just a bit better than me, as usual. But listen up. Mm -hmm. A bit better? I think more than a bit. Let me tell you who's going to take on the Pokemon League and become the champion. You guessed right, it's going to be me. Anyways, you should be able to take on the gym leader here. Now hurry up and get to it. Alright, interesting. So, let's heal up because we did just face another tough battle here. Even though he didn't knock out even one of our Pokemon. He did do a little bit of damage to uh, Ace and wouldn't mind having everybody in tip-top fighting shape. Now, I don't think we have enough time in this episode to face the gym, and we did just face the gym last episode, so I'd like to spread out just a little bit. Maybe we'll go to the library instead and come back to the gym. It'd be nice to face them in the near future because, you know, I don't want to be too overleveled. Um, not a lot to see and do here, I don't think. There's a boat. Do you want to set sail? Ooh, we can sail to Iron Island. I might do that. Maybe next episode. Maybe I'll wait a little bit. I might wait a little bit for that. I really do want to go to Iron Island because there's some really cool stuff there. It's it's a, it's pretty fun in my opinion. In my memory at least. Also, I like this city. It reminds me of a lot of cool areas near where I am. Um, I'm in Maryland, so like Annapolis or even like Baltimore sometimes. Just being by the waterfront. Definitely has a, a very Annapolis vibe to it. I will say that. I'm going to be a sailor like my daddy. He's a real man among men. Even the sea doesn't scare him. Oh, but the gym leader's cool too. Brian is so, Byron is so awesome. We'll meet Byron soon enough. Our boy has too much energy. I wish he'd be a little quieter. Especially in a one-room home here. That must be something. Sailor, oh, it's just the sailor's house, okay. Now, there is a, a house here that's relevant to... Um, the mythical Pokemon um, Darkrai, but because Darkrai is mythical, you can't encounter it in normal gameplay. Ooh, Sida can learn Future Sight. Very cool. Excuse me, Tori. Harbor Inn. The text is too faded to read. I think it's this one. The door is tightly shut. Impossible to open. Yeah, you have to have like a special event item, I think, to do that. Although maybe you can get it by Mystery Gift these days. I haven't really looked into that too much, but we'll see. Maybe in the end game I'll look more into legendaries and mythical Pokemon and see if that's something that I could work on. Canlay City, cargo port. Yeah, nice little view there. Anything in here? Somewhere beyond the sea. There are other lands populated by Pokemon and trainers. Yes, there are. We visited quite a few in our adventures, and uh I'm sure we'll visit many more. TM48. Skill swap. Okay, it changes abilities. Oh, I never did look up Strength Sap. Actually, I googled it and then I got distracted and didn't tell you guys what it does. It lowers the target's attack by one stage and then restores the user's HP by the same amount as the target's effective attack stat. Okay, interesting. So I guess because Pokemon using it were fully healed, it didn't do anything else, but it's kind of like Giga Drain, but instead of lowering HP, it lowers attack. I think I did see somebody using that in competitive battling once, which is why it rang a bell. All right, what do you guys say we head to the library? Since we have a little bit of time left today. And then Iron Island or gym? Iron Island or gym? What should I do next? Maybe the gym, just so we're not over level and we can keep our main team with us. And then I'll switch back to our secondary team for a bit after that. Maybe I'll bring them with us to Iron Island. That could be fun. Sorry, I was talking a little bit loud for the library. Hello, this is the Candlelight Library. Please keep quiet while you're on the premises. I will do my best. Hopefully you guys can still hear me over the music. What is it? Please don't disturb me when I'm reading. Sorry, I thought you were browsing, not reading. Pick out a good book. It's a lot of books, but it's probably hard to reach the top shelves there. Full disclosure, I was actually reading a book before I played this. I was getting really into it too, but I was like, no, I can read. I have more times where I can read, because I can read like, you know, lunch at work or something, but fewer times where I can do this. So I Decided, you know what? And plus, I, I really enjoy playing this game, even more than reading, so I'm glad I did. The books on the third floor are easy to read. The ones down here are all too tough for me to understand. Oh, well, at least they're organized. wonder if they have Dewey Decimal. 
Or do they have like dugong decimal system here in the library? Someone's always checked out the book I want to read. Oh, that's always a shame. Every book contains someone's memories of various places and times. Libraries aren't just building where books are kept, you know. There were different places and times you're gathered together. Very true. I've always loved libraries. Although I am glad that... I'm glad libraries still exist. I think they have very important roles like community centers and you know, books are still important. But I'm also glad that like books these days are digitized, especially like historical books. Because it is far too easy to have like a Library of Alexandria situation and lose so much effort and, and history and, and stories and all. Sinnoh's Myth. Three Pokemon there were. Into the lakes they dove, deep, deep, drawing no breath. Deeper, deeper they dove, into suffocating depths they dove. Deeper than deepest they alight, from the lake floor they rise. Bearing with them the power to make vast lands, they rise again. Alright, a little bit repetitive there, sounds like a Bob Seger song, but maybe they were trying to be like poetic. Snow folk stories. Alright, try to be quick here. Pick clean the bones of Pokemon caught in the sea or stream, thank them for the meals they provide, and pick their bones clean. When the bones are clean as they can be, set them free in the water from which they came. The Pokemon will return fully fleshed, and it begins anew. I don't think that's true. I think that's something they probably told themselves to make them feel better about eating Pokemon, if I had to guess. There lived a Pokemon in a forest. In the forest, the Pokemon shed its hide to sleep as a human. Awakened, the human dons the Pokemon hide to roam villages. That's also a little creepy, but I like that they're putting like folk tales in the library. Somebody clearly spent some time on this, and I do appreciate that. There once were Pokemon that became very close to humans. There once were humans and Pokemon that ate together at the same table. It was a time when there existed no differences to distinguish the two. Oh. Well, I mean, it's true that like a lot of real fairy tales are, are a little creepy, so it makes sense. Alright, well, we checked out the library. I don't know... If there was really anything else here that I should look at. I think we read this one, right? Betray your anger, lest question mark will come. Weep not with sorrow, or question mark will draw near. When joy and enjoyment come as natural as the very air, that is happiness. Let such be blessed by the hand of master question mark. It was a custom to speak those words. Hmm. wonder if the text is blanked out, or if it's like a, a symbol we couldn't translate, maybe? Like wingdings? I'm not sure. Alright. Well, I know there's no drink or, uh, or drink or food allowed in the library, but I need a drink of water. My throat is dry. Hmm. Very interesting. So, I thought something was supposed to happen either in the library or when I left the library, but I suspect they want you to face the gym leader first. Nope, don't want to save. Nope, I want to do town map. Oh, actually, it said right there. Defeat the gym leader at the Cantilave Gym. All right. Well, in that case, as much as I really don't want to, um, let's go ahead and make this just a little bit of a shorter episode today. Um, I don't really want to go somewhere and do something else, you know, just to kill time. So I need to get some sleep, unfortunately. Uh, but that's okay. It'll be something to look forward to. I might be able to play tomorrow night. I'm actually off work uh, tomorrow, but I got some stuff to do. Uh, that's why I'm up late right now. Uh, but the good news is I'm actually only going to be working in the office one more day between now, which is mid-December, and the end of the year. So um, I should have more time, hopefully, to play this game. We'll see how it works out. There's other stuff I need to take care of as well. But yeah, that's it for me for now. So hope you guys enjoyed. As always, leave me a comment or like if you did, and I will see you right back here for our next gym battle. Take care.